All right, guys, remote location again, and I'm here with NH Rick, and I have a small gathering of part of his collection. I mean, these are obviously probably some of the heavy hitters in his collection, but he really hasn't been doing watches but maybe four or five years, and you can just see how quickly it escalates, obviously, with the watches that are in front of us. This is the JLC Polaris. Beautiful watch, kind of understated, I think, uh, but, you know, very clean and classic. This is a I believe the in-house movement, right? Yep. Everything. So I don't know a ton about this watch. I'm sure Rick can talk more about it, or heck, maybe you watching this probably know this watch inside and out. I just don't. I don't get the chance to see a lot of these watches like this on a regular basis. Beautiful blue dial, uh, obviously a c compressor style case. I don't know if this is a true compressor or not. I don't think it is. I don't, yeah, I don't think it is either. So it's not necessary to have a compressor style case anymore, but the design of it is beautiful nonetheless. So... Uh, let's let's just take a look at the watches and I'll do a wrist shot and then I'll try to do a loom shot at the end because there are some interesting loom features on these. So, uh, and I have Rick right here, so maybe I'll ask him a couple questions and then you guys can hear him. Uh, this is a butterfly clasp. I'm not I'm not going to clasp this down because it's a struggle. But there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Beautiful looking watch. So I guess my question for Rick might be: uh, So you've been doing this for like four or five years. Mm -hmm. What watch did it start with? Uh, so I think with most people, it, it, uh, Seiko is kind of the, the gateway drug. So with me, uh, you know, looking into various Seikos and then, you know, keeping keeping a couple of them and it just kind of got out of hand from there. Yeah. And it's weird that you can escalate from like, when, when you're saying Seiko, you're probably talking like two, three, four, five hundred dollar maybe. And then you start going higher and higher, even within that brand. And then you start to get desensitized. Uh, and then maybe possibly exposed to some of the quality of like a Breitling or an Omega or a Tudor or something like that. And you're like, well, yeah, there's diminishing returns for sure. Uh, but to get to that better quality, it, you really have to jump in the price. Absolutely. And, and it, it's not always necessary for people. But if you're going to be super passionate about this hobby and really try to immerse into it and see the, the finer parts of it, like these movements, then... That's what you got to do, you know. A seagull movement is not going to do what this one's going to do for you, you know. It yeah. still looks cool on the seagulls, but it's you got to take it to the next level. So that's the Breitling Pistachio, I think is what everyone's calling it. I don't think that's what Breitling's calling it. but No, they call it the, the Premier. The yeah, the nine. Premier. So as watch enthusiasts, man, we, we pick some funny names for stuff for sure. <laughs> um, you know, here's, here's the uh, Tudor Pro. This is an awesome watch for sure. Um, actually, I just made a deal with NH Rick, so this is this is going to end up on my wrist. So also serial flipper, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's he's buying and selling like most of us, and that helps you fund the next one. Uh, sometimes, any regrets on selling any particular watches? No, you can't look at it that way, or else uh, you know you kind of get held back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's part of just moving forward and experiencing different watches. Do you have any keepers? Absolutely. So, so that one you're holding, uh, the, the Speedy is definitely a keeper for me. And then the, uh, the Bond uh, watch. Is, so yeah, uh, two Omega keeper. keepers. Yeah. Let me uh, let me show these because I have not. I don't think I've done a video on the Sapphire Sandwich. So there's the newer clasp, of course, newer movement. I mean, if I were going to pick up a Speedy, I think this would be the Speedy that I would end up purchasing. Just a beautiful watch. Here, I'll pop it on wrist. Rick and I have about the same wrist size, so that's convenient. So there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Crazy amount of taper on that bracelet. And how long have you had the Speedy? Uh, just a couple months now. Only a couple months, he's bonded with it. Definitely keeping it. Did you start off with a moon swatch or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here's the no time to die. I mean, I'm a big fan of this, obviously I like Omega, I love Liar Lugs, and Grade 2 Titanium, plus this bracelet is like crazy, crazy. And then Rick actually picked this one up through another buddy, uh, Clayton, the Watchdog Podcast. So Clayton had it first, and then they made a trade, and now Rick has it, and he claims it's a keeper. But <laughs> when you're a serial flipper, you know, sometimes that just isn't the case. You can, you can think one thing, but fast forward in a few months or a year or something like that, and then this might magically turn into a different watch. So there it is on wrist. The only issue I think a lot of people will have 
with this bracelet is the way they've configured it and everything it's just there it, it is what it is but like you know the way the clasp sits or i think it's mostly the clasp that's the issue the way it sizes um i mean they could have done something different i've seen other designs but yeah the way the mesh folds you you generally need about a seven inch wrist i think to, to wear yeah because of that right there yeah like that's that's me pushing on it a little bit so like the way it's going to contort to your wrist basically yeah seven inch or larger wrist i think you're going to be okay but you can get this you can wear it on a natal or you could wear it on a uh, rubber strap or something like that and it would still be awesome i i could see wearing this even on like a uh, just a regular like vulcanized rubber strap mm -hmm. i would be totally fine with that but the bracelet's really cool but it adds to the price uh actually originally clayton told me that when he bought this watch he bought it with the nato which was like eighty one hundred dollars and then he later added the bracelet the bracelet alone was fourteen hundred versus just buying it in this configuration at ninety two hundred so and they're holding their value yeah. on the used market so uh what else did we oh the cartier check this out now i know i haven't really done a video on one of these yet either but this is the large cartier cartier santos and this has the adlc um, so that's a big improvement because this isn't going to scratch typically this would be like a high polished just regular metal and it's i'm sure it's a scratch magnet so this one's going to be way more versatile as a re regular wearing watch is this like keeper status for you too rick no, no no this is not keeper status so this one's actually on the chopping block so if you're looking for one of these there'll be information down below um and when it's gone it's gone because honestly rick i think has the probably the lowest price anywhere uh for this particular watch right yeah, because like retail, these are uh, seventy eight fifty, and he's he's well below that. And these come with an awesome bracelet and this rubber strap, and everything's quick release. I mean, the bracelet, the strap is everything's quick release. You can just reach in here, and you can just uh, I've never done it, but let me try. It. I think you just push here with your nail, and this pops out. Maybe yeah, there we go. That just pops out. Very simple. And then same thing for attaching it back in. You just you can see there it's not really spring bars it's like a spring it's it's a larger it's not it's pretty wild so that guides in just like that oh yeah that's slick that is so slick uh, and then the kind of the same thing with the bracelet so you can change out the the strap or the bracelet but the bracelet even sizing the bracelet there's just these pins and it's the same thing it's it's kind of hidden but there's a you can see that little indent there you push in on that and that releases the pin and the pin is captured but and then you just push it back in so just like that like wow don't even need a spring bar tool or sizing tools or nothing and it's really hard to see those marks this is like some super high level quality stuff here but hopefully we see some of this stuff trickle down to other manufacturers because that is just slick. I think IWC has a similar system. IWC. The only other one I've seen. Yeah. So, but that's nice to see the, the bigger brands do stuff like this because it definitely, it's going to make its way, it'll become more and more mainstream for sure. Uh, let me pop the Santos on wrist. How long have you had the Santos? Uh, so, we got it pretty recently, uh, within the last six months. Any particular reason why it's not connecting with you? Just didn't give me the fizz you know like the like the others yeah and this is a watch definitely because clayton has one as well let me grab so clayton has one as well so i have two of them here uh pretty cool uh and it's one that i even i have noticed like you know pictures and video and stuff like that there's no way any of that is going to do it justice until you can put one of these on wrist and check it out it is it is such a good watch. It conforms to your wrist and it's so thin. I, I see why people are drawn to it. I was thinking it's gonna be like too dressy. And it's it's not, it's definitely sporty. But because of the Romans and just the overall look and the brand heritage and everything, uh, it, it still, in my opinion, seems like it'd be more dressy, but yeah, that's easily like an everyday dress watch. I mean, Clayton wears it. Doing all kinds my of, favorite watch yeah, yeah <laughs> so. it's clayton's favorite watch and i'll do a little mini collection video with uh clayton's watches here too because 
you know, I got to do the, uh, seize the opportunity when I have it available. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Rick for sharing these with us. And I will give you a loom shot. Thanks for watching.